Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for September 9th, 10th, and 11th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, I am, because this is the weekend, I am going to use my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards, my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I will pull a card from my Angels of Abundance with Doreen and Grant Virtue, and I will also pull one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, for the overview, and remember, this is just the introduction if you're new here. Basically, down in the description, I have the timestamp where you can jump to your regular readings. And, but I do ask if you would watch the introduction at least one time. Okay, But this is going to be the introduction that's tagged on to all of the videos. So you'll see this over and over again if you, go, if you don't jump. Okay, so... For the introduction, I will do a reading with my Weight Rider, um, Traditional, and my Colette Baron read the Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. I'm an intuitive channeler. That means I open myself up to higher power, Holy Spirit, um, you know, God, whoever that is you want to call. And I just ask for the guidance, and I ask for the words, and I ask for blessings for you, for me, and that the words be true and that they resonate with someone out there. Anyway, let's see what we've got going on with just the planetary movements. This, I actually, I do have this posted on my uh, website, so you may want to look at that if you want to just kind of glance to see. Right now, we have, because we do have Mercury going, res, uh, going retrograde on the 10th, so as of the 10th, we will have six planets retrograde. Actually, the 9th, the 9th, 10th. And that's going to be Jupiter, which is in Aries. Mercury, which is in Libra. Right now, we have uh, Neptune in Pisces, Pluto in Cap Capricorn, Saturn in Aquarius, and Uranus in Taurus. So we've got a lot of interesting energy. And Mercury goes retrograde really the evening of the 9th at 11.35 p.m., and that would be Eastern Standard Time. So two planets are direct right now, Mars, which is in Gemini, and it's going to be there for like eight, nine months, I think. And then we now have Venus in Virgo. So that, you know, but those two are going direct. A lot of retrograde energy, and retrograde energy means a lot of digging up of the past, digging up of the present, and also a little bit of laying new foundations for the future. So what's going on the 10th? Let's go here. The 10th, again, Mercury is retrograde now, 8 degrees Libra. There is a full moon in Pisces, and that's at 17 degrees. Now, this is a really strong wishing moon. Pisces is your deepest desires, your deepest hidden, hidden wants. Now, you also need to know that the full moon is conjunct with Neptune, which is also in Pisces dreams, again, deep energies there. Remember, Neptune is um, retrograde, so really digging up some maybe some old, old memories and old wants and thoughts. Now, the full moon is squaring Mars in Gemini. Now, squaring puts a little pressure. It's, you know, there's some pressure put on the full moon. Mars in Gemini. Mars is the, you know, the god of war. Gemini is the twins and, you know, um, you know, very much, um, very intellectual, very thought-provoking type of energy. And it's really putting some pressure on that full moon to deliver. And then on the 11th, we have the uh, sun, which is in Virgo, trining, which is, again, a very positive energy with Uranus. And that is the, um, you know, expect the unexpected, which is now retrograde in Taurus. So, well, the, you know, the 10th and the 11th have some really strange energies very positive energies. Uranus and Mars is really making um, is making things maybe a little more unexpected. So you might you know, and, and Mars and Gemini is really pushing pushing for things to be done. So interesting stuff with that. I did post the Schumann resonance for today. I don't post you know I don't post it unless I'm seeing something a little bit on the odd side or unless it's in that really white zone. And this one today was in the odd zone, okay? It just, I don't know, do they, does this break or something? It was just very odd energies going on. So take a look at that. Let me know what you think about it. So let's go on 
for this weekend. So that we do have the strong full moon with, you know, Neptune being, um, what did I say it was, conjunct with Neptune? Anyway, with Neptune, which is in Pisces, it is a really strong wishing moon. So again, remember the moon to me is not, I don't, um, you know, I do not, uh, worship the moon, but I do look at it as a divine creation, and it does affect the earth. The moon cycles does affect the moon, th does affect the earth. So it is one that, um, you know, it's one of those times to release, release what's holding you back, relinquish what you don't need anymore, and request the good stuff. Okay, so release, relinquish, and request. You can start that like three days before, three days after. But it is a very strong, it is about wishes, it is about dreams, it is about wanting more in our lives. And that's always a good thing, especially my, you know, everybody that's watching, you know, you are light workers, you are, you know, you are, um, you know, stargazers, you are star seeds. So you wouldn't be here except that there's something calling you here. So um, interesting weekend energy that, you know, and it's, and it's interesting even that, you know, September, except that those planets are, you know, there's pressure put on those planets that are retrograde, the, or the, the planets are putting pressure on us, you know, with the retrograde energy. It's almost like, um, I don't know, is there a game, is there a game being set up? I, it just feels like there's an anticipation, there's a watchfulness, there's a wanting, and it just feels like um, there's a readiness being made. Okay. I did take the weekend off for um, answering comments, um, but, you know, because I took really, I took a, I was kind of on the computer light, okay? I really wasn't on the computer every day, and that's where I answer my comments, but I was watching on my phone. <laughs> it's just that it's not easy to answer you the way I want to answer you. So thank you for all those comments. I really enjoyed them, and I really appreciate all the support you give me with that. Okay. Let's go on now. Let's see what we've got here. Remember, anything reversed to me has a really strong, like, hey, let's pay a little more attention to this. Not that we don't pay attention to the others. It's just this was kind of like a, I really want you to notice and take, take note of this message. Okay, let's see what higher power, God, Holy Spirit wants to say. And again, you don't have to be, you don't have to have the belief system that I do. You know, take what I say and just adapt it to your own language, okay? I do believe we were all placed in certain spots in order to keep people's vibrations very high. Okay, right, so here we go. One, two, and three. Three cards. All of them are face down. Let's see, I should move this down just a touch. Here we go. Let's see what we have here. First card. This one's been coming up a lot, hasn't it, in the overview, in the what's going on in the universe. So we have that four of pentacles, four again, stability, um, leadership, organization. We have the king holding his, his money closely, almost cherishing his money. There is the pentacle, because pentacles is earth energy, money energy, tangible energy. Um, you know, this is our Capricorn and our Taurus and our Virgo. Now, we are in Virgo season, but Virgo doesn't have a lot of planetary action, except that it's got the sun in it right now. But, um, you know, Uranus and Capricorn are, you know, in that retrograde energy. So there is a lot of really holding your money dear, um, you know, cherishing it in some ways. Not necessarily putting it first for everything, but it is, you know, guarding your money. There is a guarding energy right here. Thinking about money, there is money that's in that uh, crown energy, but it is also crown. And remember when we talk about chakras, the, the, seventh, the seventh chakra from going from the bottom to the top is the crown chakra. Now, so there's one thought that we can go with this is that we're going to be thinking about money. We're going to be really, it's going to be really kind of, you know, very much in our, um, in our minds, in our thoughts. But the other that I like to think, especially with the crown, is that crown chakra and that there is a higher power that will be providing what it is we need. I have had many times in my life, I've gone through many ups and downs in financial cycles, and I know that it wasn't due to my wisdom at all, but I have been provided for. And then also we have the, um, you know, we have the pentacles under the feet. Now, I do find it interesting that I don't know, is he wearing socks or is he wearing half boots? Let's say he's wearing half boots. 
But again, he's standing firm on his money. Or he's not standing, he's sitting. He's sitting, but the money the money again is underneath his feet. We have, um, you know, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with that one just yet, but we have the, um, the, the city on the one side that has, you know, has the colors in it. We have the city on the other that has the gray in it. Not again, not sure where we're at with that either. So um, let's go on and we'll see. Some, there is something about this. And, you know, I love to hear what you think about this. You know, what you're thinking about this King of Pentacles. And he has been coming up. Not every, you know, not every overview reading, but he has been coming up a lot in our reading. So guarding money, thinking of money, um, you know, protecting our money, maybe even. But again, the crown, the fact that he has a crown, I am thinking that, you know, we have to, we have to trust. We have to trust higher power to provide for us. Here we go. Next card is, we have that two of cups. Now, not so much with this card, but cup energy is our water energy. So that's our Pisces. We've got that full moon in Pisces right now. Scorpio, we have the south node in Scorpio. So that, that's an interesting little, that's another type of uh, video that I've not made. You know, so there's a lot of past energy with Scorpio. It's also, it is cancer energy. And that is fluid. It is romantic, very spiritual, very the feels, the feels, you know, the, the good feels, the bad feels, the happy feels, the sad feels. Okay. So it is, you know, the cups, this is a two, two has choices, decisions, and it's also coming together energy here. And this one is generally the one that says, you know, that people, you are coming together. You are joining together. You are, you are sharing something, sharing in something that is very spiritual and very major too. So here we go here. We have the cups. You know, the cups are something that holds your fluids. We have the, the flowers around the man and we have the, um, olive leaves or the laurel around the woman so there could be some, and then we have this uh, is that a griffin i'm not very sure about that but there is something that's very magical and mystical um you know that you know is that our is that our sign for medicine not quite sure about that either but there is a connection here there is something about joining together and um you know keeping spirits keeping spirits light, but keeping spirits very, very, um, I don't know, um, very loved, okay, community, but could also be, you know, um, there, you know, if this was a individual reading, it could be twin flame, it could be soulmate energy too, here we go, our next card is, now we come to that queen of pentacles, now the queen, all of the court cards and i like that i can say it now because i won't say it in the individual readings all of the court cards have dual energies the pages underlying energy is pentacles pentacles is earth energy like i said it is capricorn taurus virgo money job career the knight's underlying energy is fire or rod energy and that is aries leo and sagittarius remember Jupiter is still in Aries. Passionate, burning, very determined energy. Now we come to the queen. Underlying energy is that water again. Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Pisces is that full moon right now. Um, so, you know, fluid, emotional, spiritual energy too. And then we come to the king who's underlying, and that would be the king of swords, whose underlying energy is air, which would be Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. And Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra all have stuff going on. So does the Earth energy, too. Water has a little bit of going on. And um, really, Leo, I mean, sorry, air, um, fire energy only has, which is still quite big, the Jupiter in Aries going on here, too. So the queen underlying is that water energy. But it's also overlying is that pentacle energy, that earth energy. The queen wants to make sure that she is taken, that she is taken care of, but also that her, her people are taken care of. And she doesn't necessarily want to take care of them in just meager ways. She wants to make sure that their, their needs are such that they're not going to, um, you know, want more. You know, that they'll be satisfied. So the queen of pentacles 
um, you know, the earth energy here, she's a very loving energy. She's a very providing energy. She is a very much, um, you know, a queen that wants to just make sure that there's no, um, that, the, that, that the people aren't wanting. Okay, so we've got some interesting money energy going on here, but then we have that, that water energy going on too. So there is something about, you know, making sure that our physical needs are being met, but at the same time, our spiritual needs are being met too. So it's an interesting weekend. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting dynamic for this weekend. Okay, let's go on now. The Colette Barrett Barrett, right? <laughs> Colette Baron Reed. Let's see what the good tarot has for us. Let's see. Higher power, what do you have here for us? Because I feel like um, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of masculine energy. There's a lot of feminine energy. It's a very, it, it is a balanced energy with all that's going on um, in that earthly and spiritual realm. So, interesting here. Let's see. Let's see what we've got going. Okay, here we go. Okay. One. Two. Oh, my, oh, I wasn't going to do three, but I guess we're going to do three. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. We only do one, but let's do our three, and let's see what we've got here. Next card. That's the king of air. Remember I told you air, air energy, um, you know, Aquarius, Libra, and Virgo, uh, and Gemini energy. The king is very much a ruler. The king, this king really you know knows a lot this is this is one that has experienced a lot but he also rules with his head he does not rule with his heart at all some people might say that he's a little bit cold-hearted with this but he is somebody that says you know we need to do what we need to do so not necessarily warm and cuddly um, but at the same time not necessarily unjust either very there's a lot of um, justice with the king of air okay here we go next card we have that nine of earth energy so nine is let's wrap it up let's you know you've got everything you need that earth energy is basically that same you know the pentacle energy so there is so whatever this is going on there's a lot of wisdom there's a lot of smarts with this we may not necessarily, it may not necessarily be um, something that connects with our hearts. We might be feeling why, 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 but then the answer is very, it's like this is the way things are being done. Nine of Earth does say that you will have your needs met. Um, and sometimes the Nine of Earth is about having some of your wishes met also. So here we go. Last card, the Page of Air. So it's interesting that it's interesting that we had, when we had the Queen of Pentacles, it has a combination between the Pentacles and the, um, and the, what was this, the water energy. So the Page of Air now has the Earth energy, because remember, underlying is the, pa is the Page, and we have that Air. So this does have a, you know, in Pages, very much so. They love to, you know, they love new projects. They love to start on new things. They believe that they can get through, through a lot of these things. A lot of this could be something to do with a job. It could be a career. It could be just even a way of tangible life. However, we have that air energy. The air energy does say, you know, it does say that there can be some challenges. The air energy does say that, you know, it's not necessarily an easy route to go down. However, that page is very enthusiastic. That page wants to try. And so there, there's a lot of weird, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Spiritual, earth, uh, earthly energies being met. Yet at the same time, we really need to be very, you know, the world is basically being very concise, very strategic, very, you know, um, very, this is the way, these are the steps that need to be happening, need to be taken place. Needs are being met, though it might be a bit of a challenge for this weekend. Okay, now, you know, you know what I'm going to tell you. Please comment, tell me what this means to you, and why don't we now, you know, and remember when you're looking at these and you're, like I said, jumping past the introduction, remember that many people cross-watch, they, cro they watch their, their rising, ascending, moon, Venus, 
Mars, and Mercury. Okay? Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. You keep my you keep my channel moving and you keep me growing and you keep me on air and I really do appreciate that. So why don't we start our videos now? Hello my Sagittarius. So how are you handling all of this emotional drama that's all around you? Is there emotional drama? I just feel like with this full moon that people around you are just, you know, just, it, it does affect people, okay? It's called lunar. It's Luna. It, you know, it, it does affect their emotions. It does affect people. And my Sagittarius is not sure that you want to be around it. So maybe this is one of those good times to really step away from the drama. Step away from the drama. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, sure. <laughs> These cards want to come out. One, two, and three. Three cards are face down. First one is for my Sagittarius's. Ace of Air. New thoughts, new directions, new opportunities, new ways of looking at something. Because Ace is a one, new beginnings. Air is our um, Aquarius, our Libra, and our Mar, our Mars, <laughs> our Gemini. Now, Libra and Aquarius. Again, they have their planets in in retro right now, though. Mercury will go retro the night of the ninth Eastern time. But Mars is in Gemini, and there that's very, very forceful energy here too. So something is, you know, you're kind of looking at things, you're thinking about things, you're trying to find a new direction, you are finding a new direction. Again, too, I do feel like you need to leave some of the drama of other people, and maybe that is part of your decision-making with this. But this is, again, this is like all of a sudden, aha, I think I know what I want to do. I think I am going to do it. So there is a lot of direction, directional um, energy with your Ace of Air going on right now. It doesn't mean that it's going to be an easy process to whatever this is. Is this... Are you trying to leave, um, you know, a situation? Are you trying to leave a job and you're thinking now I need to get a job in order to leave a job, which is really the best thing to do. So it's kind of going to take a little work. It's going to take a little bit of insight and a little bit of, just a little bit of, I don't know, scheming <laughs> to move it forward. Okay, so here we go. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth of a situation a challenging beginning. So I do feel like there's a little manipulative energy here, but again, it's to, it's a very it's to protect whatever you need to do. Okay? Next card is the page of fire. So pages, underlying energy, earth, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, fire is your energy, it is also Aries, it is also Leo energy, passionate, burning, determined. Usually this has to do with something like a new job or a new career or a new even a new place to live, but the fire is like the fire in your belly. The you know basically I have this passion. I really want to get done. I really want to move this. Now the page of fire, again, I'm kind of feeling like you have to be really careful with your thoughts. And I don't want to say manipulative, but I will. I feel like you have to really kind of, I'm not, net, I'm not going to tell you to lie. Lies will turn, you know, lies will bite you in the butt, okay? But it's kind of like you have to, um, you know, just be really careful with what you're saying and what you're doing. So there is a sense of cautious, but the page of fire might be a little bit, um, might be a little like, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I'm still feeling like you should care. You should care. And you need to be very, you need to be protective of yourself, okay? Now, this could be as simple as somebody putting together a surprise party for someone else. So there's a little, there's a little bit of a secretive energy here going on right now. There's an excitement of it too. Maybe you've been, or maybe you've been applying for jobs and now there's this really exciting one coming and you don't really know how to approach it just yet. Uh, you know, how, how you tell your boss this or how you tell a significant other this because there could be something that it might affect them also. Again, going back to the beginning about, you know, their drama. Well, that's their drama. Anyway, not to say you shouldn't be kind, but the page of fire is outgoing, creative, confident, mischievous. News of an exciting new venture. I'm sorry, endeavor. Use your originality and ingenuity. So whatever it is, it's kind of like, be smart about it. Be smart about it, okay? Okay, my sages. Next card. 
justice. So we have an eight. We have a one. We have an eight. Eight, one. one um, eight is unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. Archangel Raguel. Justice is, you know, basically what is right. Now, when Mercury goes retrograde, I always feel like there's karmic justice coming into place. So there, you know, it could be like karma or um, the universe, the empress. A lot of times this comes from the empress is putting things way the way they need to be put. Again, I'm going to say that you have to be really careful with some of the people you might be dealing with. Um, so, it, you know, sometimes you want to really share everything about it. You might, again, you might need to step away from some of the people and don't, don't overshare. Don't overshare, okay, my Sages? Um, and if, you know, they might say, well, where are you going for lunch? And instead of saying, well, or why did you take off take off the afternoon? And instead of saying, well, because I had a job interview, you just basically, you know, you, again, there's this little sense of not quite telling the truth, but not lying either. Does that make sense? Anyway, justice. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. And that's the thing is that many times you do not have to be the one. You don't have to bear everything to everybody. Okay? That's that's the thing that we somebody can ask you a question and you can say, oh, you know, tell them you don't want to answer it. Or I, I have no answer for that. Um, you know, you don't have to you don't have to say if they ask you where you were that for that afternoon, you don't have to tell them. Okay? Anyway, don't lie. Maybe stretch the truth. Anyway, let's see what we've got here. But the weekend seems exciting. It seems like the kind of weekend you would enjoy, uh, except for, you know, the people that want to ask you <laughs> what you've been doing. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Accelerated motion. Accelerated motion. Now, this is, you know, again, we have that 8 energy. So 188. This would be, I believe this would be the eight of, well, this is purple. It's not the blue, but accelerated motion. Things are happening faster. It's not a major arcana card, but it, it is about things happening faster than slower. So whatever, if you are going, again, I'm using it as an example. If you are going for a job interview, you're going to hear about the answer quickly. If you are looking to uh, to move, you're going to be hearing that, you know, buying a house, getting a new apartment, whatever that is, you're going to hear it quicker than later, okay? Now, there is also, too, I do like her looking up at that because, you know, there is always about making wishes on, you know, on shooting stars, too. But things are going to start moving faster for you. It's best not to lie, but it doesn't mean that you have to tell the truth. You don't have to bear your soul to anyone, whatever this is all about. And whatever this is all about, my Sages, let me know, okay? Okay, let's go to the Angels of Abundance and see what we've got here. Here we go. For my Sagittarius's. Oh, we got two cards wanting to come out, so we will do them both. Here we go. Attracting, not chasing. Anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fears underlying chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love, gratitude, and welcoming energy. Interesting. And this one wanted to come out too. Have courage to ask for and accept help. Asking for help is a sign of strength, as is ac accepting it as it is offered to you. Very often when you ask God for help, prayers are answered through other people. Be sure to accept this assistance as well as give it to others as you are guided. So what does that mean with everything here? Hmm, I don't know. Because I do feel like there's some people that you may not want to necessarily bear your soul to, but at the same time, there could be people there that are willing, very willing to help you through whatever this is. Okay, let's see what crystal or energy would be helpful for my Sagittarius's. Green Jade. Attracting love, balance, dreams come true, purity. Dreams come true, it's a good one with the full moon. Make your wishes. 
Anyway, my Sagittarius says you, this is a little this is a little different, a little confusing. So let me know if you can. But at the same time, like, share, subscribe, click on that bell for notifications. As always, my Sages, know that you are loved. Stay shining, and be blessed. Bye bye.